Prairie. Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad you're here today. Um, we have some announcements to start off our service, so would you come and give us our announcements today? As Pastor Mark noted, we're, uh, we're celebrating our seniors today. As you can see, we've got three of them exhibited up here. Uh, we got Georgie, Bru Four. well, hey, where's Bru Ryan, this is like the second week in a row. I'm sorry. Just do, the, just do the announcements, okay, buddy? All four of them. <laughs> That's right. Stick my dates up, Deb. There we go. Well, we're so glad to have you here with us. Thanks for, thanks for joining us this Sunday. Um, we, we have a lot going on in, in May here between, you know, graduates and, and everything. But I just want to say, high schoolers, today we are doing our senior banquet. So if you're a high schooler and, and you are... Uh, you're interested in, in joining us for a meal, we're going to head out to Sioux Falls today at 4 o'clock from the church. So meet us here at 4, um, and we'll head out. Bring 20 bucks with you for a meal, and, and we'll be good. Um, on top of that, we have some VBS stuff coming up. We still need volunteers. We still need people to come in and, and, and help us. So if you're interested in helping with VBS, please talk to Cheryl or Maureen. And they'd love to get you guys plugged in in some capacity where you can talk to me afterward and I can help you find the right avenues. We'd love to get you involved in VBS in some way. Um, this is a huge ministry of our church and we love being able to minister to these, these younger kids in that way. Parents, um, check out all the flyers in the foyer for, for summer camp dates, for activities throughout the summer. We put together a calendar for our youth group activities um, and, and it details all of the the cost, the, the dates, the activity, whatever it might be, it's all out in the foyer. So if you're interested in getting your kids plugged in or if you just want some more information, check out those flyers out there. Um, yeah, and that's, that's all we got for announcements. We'll start off with some worship, and yeah, thanks for joining us. If you could stand for the reading of the word. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden it, your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Pr praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statues as, no, as one rejoices in great riches. I mediate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Amen. Thanks, Ryan. I did not post this song this week. It's a new song. You'll get it by the chorus. Sing it out when we get there. We need your help, all right? Let's praise the Lord. Praise without me. I'll praise without 
Well, we've got some other um, parts of our worship today. We have a, a graduate blessing happening, and so we're not doing as many songs, but uh, that means that right now is our, our time of prayer. And uh, this is a, a sweet, sweet time in our worship uh, celebration when we get to go to the Lord and we get to share our hearts, we get to share, intercede for those in need of prayer. So I encourage you in the moment of quietness just to share with God whatever is on your heart. We, we begin sometimes, uh, we do this, and uh, today is one of those times when we just would encourage you to just talk to God where you are. And uh, we'll, we'll give you some quiet in that. Also, I um, want to remember those listed in your bulletin um, and, and just to ask you to pray for them throughout the week. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. There is none like you, and therefore we come and praise you. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his name. God, we were created for this. And you are worthy of it. That all fits together to gathering together as the body of Christ to worship you to celebrate you because of who you are. We are so grateful for all that you do, but Lord, we begin by acknowledging you are God. Jesus, you are the one way, one truth, and one life. No one comes to the Father except through you. We, we affirm that. And we praise you because you are that God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we don't get it, but we know it, and we affirm it, and we praise you because you are. You are the great I am, the creator and the redeemer God. And as I said, we, we thank you for the many things that you do, the many blessings that we are privy to, that we, that we get to experience in this life. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom this morning that we have to gather here. We live in a country that that uh, allows us this, this beautiful freedom. And, and we thank you for the men and women who are protecting this freedom that we have right now. And we ask, Lord, that we, we lift them up to you and ask that you would protect, that, that you would strengthen them, and that, Lord, you would use them. I think of some even today who are off doing guard duty this weekend. Always being prepared, always being ready to go when called on. Thank you for their sacrifice. And, Lord, uh, may we continue to live in a free land. Father, we thank you that you have surrounded us in this place, in this region, with so much great medical care. And we thank you that surgeons can go and repair an Achilles heel for the, for the, the surgeon that can go and put rods in a back and, uh, and all of the different things, repair a heart valve, without even opening up a chest. To put a new heart in a chest. Lord, there, there are so many experiences that, that, that we have within our fellowship um, here recently to just remind us of the awesomeness of these bodies that you have created. And, and just the incredible knowledge that you've given men and women to understand how to treat sickness and illness and how to repair brokenness in our bodies. We pray also, Lord, and not only for those whose bodies are broken, for those who are healing, Lord, we, we pray for those whose spirits are broken, struggling with either mental illness or, or just, uh, just a very, very dark time in their life right now. We pray for the comfort and the healing of your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for your church. I thank you for these ministries. I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for those VBS workers who've already said yes and, and, and those who are yet to come and, and to say yes. Lord, we ask that you would um, just prepare our children, even now, to receive the gospel message proclaimed at Vacation Bible School, that many would come to faith, that our baptismal would be um, 
there will be a line waiting to be baptized this fall because of what you do through that ministry. God, we thank you for your goodness and grace toward us each and every day that you allow us as a part of this church to be your ambassadors to our communities. Help us to always be ready to give an answer of the hope that we have to those who ask us. And may we do it with gentleness and respect so that you receive honor and glory and praise. Amen. This heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring the sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, in my song, in my pride, I will bring the sacrifice.
tithes and offerings to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for the ways that you provide for us. Guide us now as we give. Lord, may these gifts be used for your kingdom's purposes and for your glory. Amen. start to work as they should and uh, so we are um, we are blessed to have a, a number of our young people graduating from high school uh, if you watched in the in the slides um, you, you would have seen those names listed there and I'm going to ask them to come up with their parents we've done this tradition for a number of years now and if you could hang on to those mics, ladies, and just give them to your parents, because they're going to do some talking. 
Uh, we call this our, our graduate blessing service, and we've done it for years, and we, we long to see um, something that was done in the Old Testament. Fathers bless their children there's, there, as they uh, reach a certain age. Um, and this is, seems like an appropriate time when publicly they affirm their children. And so um, just going to give them, uh, these parents, an opportunity to share a, a word of blessing to their children. Thank you, parents. I, I know this is like um, very, very stressful, and some of you have been stressing for months. I, I don't send that out until a couple months before because I know you'll stress six months. But um, thank you for being willing to do this. I don't know who wants to go first. Good morning. Um, my name is Kevin Blagg. Uh, this is my wife, Amber. Uh, this is our graduate, Ryan. Um, so I want to start out by saying, Ryan, we want to start, start out by saying your mother and I are very proud of you and how you put into action your special God-given talents. The Bible verse we selected for you is Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Through your travels, as you move into the next phase of your life, you'll be challenged in your faith and also with decisions that affect your future. We remind you to always do what is right, even though it may seem like you're on an island at times. God will test you and give you what you can handle as long as you rely on him through those uh, tough times. Your God-given talents will serve, those, serve you and those around you and advance you far in life. We ask you to remember your church family, like Pastor Mark, Caden, teachers like Carrie, Andy, Colton, and Maria. They will always be here for you. Be humble and show gratitude to those around you and to those who assisted you to get you where you are today and where you are going. You will always have a safe place at home with your mother and me. Our door is always open. Our phone will be on any time you need anything or just to visit. We want to hear your highs, lows, and in-betweens. We also want to leave you with a verse from Joshua, uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Love, Mom and Dad. Georgiana Ruth, you are a beautiful gift from God. You came to us in God's timing. I remember the joy of a positive pregnancy test and, and Dad and I praying over you. You are God's creation. He formed you and his, he has known you even before then. While you were being formed, the pregnancy was a time that was filled with anxiety but God showed me repeatedly in different ways until it finally sunk in how faithful he was. He would not fail me no matter what happened, and he was in control. Do not fear. So my point is that from your tiny beginning, and many times since, you have been a part of my faith journey. <laughs> a part of my growing stronger in my trust in him. So I'm sure that's what I'm supposed to give you a message about today. Lean on him in your faith and, um, and bring others to Christ. So how can you do that? How can you navigate this world and go forth? This world is in much need of truth. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In an upside down world and in one that we can't even know what we see with our eyes is true or not. You need to lean on him and be in his word. You need to rely on the Holy Spirit as a counselor and a guide. Ephesians 6, put on the full armor of God. First being the belt of truth, buckled around your waist. There's a shield of faith, a helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word. So be in God's Word. And then it says to pray and pray. How will you know the right way to go or what the right thing there is to do? 
Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. What does it mean to acknowledge? It means to accept or admit the existence or the truth of. So, <clears throat> so if you've acknowledged him, you are in his word, and you are in his spirit, you are armored up, and you're belted with truth, how do you go about your day? Corinthians 10.31, do everything for the glory of God. Get up in the morning, put your feet on the ground and say, good morning, Jesus. And aim to glorify God in all the little and the big things that you will do. From singing a tune or teaching a class, and guess what will happen? You will be stronger in your faith. You will not be afraid. You will be a blessing to others and a part of their journey in faith. God will be able to work through you with the Holy Spirit and make a profound difference in those you touch. When Jesus comes, let us find you busy doing his work. We know how the story ends. We can rejoice and be thankful. God bless you and keep you, and thank you for being a part of my faith journey. Love you. My name is Mike Flannery. This is my wife, April, and our graduate, Brooklyn. Or are you? Sorry. Did have something to say. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Georgie uh, is my little archer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it appropriate that I refer to Psalm 127. Uh, children are like an arrow in the hand of a warrior, and blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Uh, certainly, your mother and I are blessed to have you. However, I'm not the warrior. The Holy Spirit is the warrior that provides the guidance. As parents, we're representative of the bow. Believe it or not, it is our duty to throw you out. <laughs> uh, but we need the Holy Spirit to provide the guidance. Uh, so my prayer is that uh, the Holy Spirit be with you and with us uh, to provide that guidance so we can aim small to miss small and give me the strength to the proper strength and support as we send you out. And may you be, have the strength uh, and flexibility to avoid obstacles along the way and yet find your tr true path back to the target that the Holy Spirit provides. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, dear Brooklyn, uh, get out. Oh, that's the, that's the first coming home with laundry speech. <laughs> dear Brooklyn, this day has come so quickly. We want you to know that we are so proud of you. You are a child God created for this world and the daughter every parent dreams of. You have been a blessing to us and others. You have grown up into such an amazing young woman, and there is not a day that your mother's and my love for you hasn't grown. From the day you were born to today, as we stand here with you as a full-grown, ready to take on the world senior, Jeremiah 29, 11, 12 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Your 18 plus years of life have been such an answered prayer. We eagerly look forward to the next stage in your life as you graduate from high school and see what God has in store for you. We try to instill 
a God and faith-based foundation in your life that you would be ready to be built upon when you are ready. Now, as you head off on your own, we pray that you will continue to make good decisions, read your Bible daily, and meet Christian friends. We encourage you to call upon the Lord and pray. We serve an awesome God who listens and always has time for you. We know that with prayers, God will guide you in your future dreams with a college degree, a career, and a future husband that will love, honor, encourage, and enrich you. We know that you don't know what you, you want to major in, but God has a plan for you, and he knows which path he will take you down and what you're, you will be doing. Remember to trust in him. With God's help, you will do so many great things in the world and touch so many lives. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Brooklyn, we love you and we ask God's blessing upon this next chapter of your life. You have a family who will support you and a wonderful church family who will be praying for you. You are not alone in this journey. You are stronger and braver than you know. And you can be anything you want to be in this world. Joshua 1.9 proclaims, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be you. Be with you wherever you go. I'm done. Should have never looked at her. So I'm Jason Lunders, this is my wife Sherry and my daughter Lexi. Um, to, our, to our Lexi, Lexi, Lou, Lulu, Bell, and Peanut. God has blessed us with a beautiful, smart, sweet, kind, talented, and maybe a little sassy daughter. We are not sure who she gets that from, but for 18 years, we have done the best that we can as parents to guide and mold. Mold you for the future. Our home is forever changing again, and we will miss the late night talks, your loud, beautiful singing throughout the house, and your silliness and goofiness and just your presence every day. We do not know what the Lord has planned for your life, Lexi, but he does. We hope and f we have hope and faith that you will live our dr out our dreams to the fullest with the Lord by your side always. We pray that you prioritize Jesus in your life daily and that you set your heart with holy fire. May you continue to share your beautiful smile and your shine your bright light in those around you. And remember to believe in yourself like we believe in you. We are your biggest cheerleaders, Lexi, and we'll continue to guide, support, and love you in all that you do. Life can be so good, but it can also be hard, and we will be here for your successes and your failures. Yes, you will fail at times, but it is okay because you have the love of us and the Lord to help you through it all. We ask the Lord to continue to bless you with love, protection, mercy, strength, and wisdom, that you hold his word close to your heart and hold tight to those things, these special verses uh, that your mom and I wanted to share with you. Joshua 1.9 says, Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you for wherever you go. And Matthew 5.16 is, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And I have a little poem to share. In the halls of wisdom, bright Lexi shines, a beacon of grace, daughter so divine. Her mind, a temple filled with dreams so grand, a high school's, as high school days now yield to expanse. Educated in ways of love, she walks with Jesus, guided from above. Sweet melodies of celebration ring 
as Lexi's heart with hope and joy takes wing. Talented and beautiful in every way, with confidence she faces each new day. Graduation's light upon her face illuminates the path to future's grace, inspiring others with her words and deeds, a shining example for all to heed. Like a psalm sung on a mountain high, Lexi's spirit soars, reaching for the sky. May her journey be filled with love's sweet song, a melody that carries her all along. Give it up for our grads and their parents. Now, I'm a little new to this. Do we want to pray and then present? Yes. Examples? Okay. Let's bow our heads and pray for these graduates. Lord, we're so grateful for how you have worked in and through these students and their families over the last 18 or so years. Lord, we pray for your protection over these students as they endeavor into their next season of life. Lord, we pray that, that you would guide them, Lord, with the various opportunities that are with, with newfound independence to, uh, to either honor you or, or, or to dishonor you. Lord, we pray that you would give them the wisdom, you would give them the strength, you give them the integrity and the endurance to glorify you in their lives. Lord, they have a solid foundation here at Sun Prairie. And as you continue to build that in their life, as, as you surround them with, with other influences, Lord, we pray that they would flourish where they're planted. Lord, we pray that, that you would give them church families that they can join uh, where, where they're going, Lord, that, that, that would encourage them, that would build them up. And Lord, we pray that you would give them people in their lives that would comfort them when they're lonely, when they're homesick, and, and when they're just wanting some comfort. And we pray that you would strengthen the parents to have wisdom in the coming years, to encourage them, to give them good advice, and Lord, that, that you would give, um, yeah, you, would, you would just bring joy in the whole situation. This is a joyful occasion, and we're grateful for it. So Lord, as we send our graduates out, we pray that you'd be with them. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As a church that is um, grounded in the Word of God, we like to send our graduates off with a, a new leather ESV study Bible so that um, even though when you're away and you have questions, theological questions, you have our cell numbers, you can call anytime, but these will help uh, when, when we don't reply. All right, so uh, Georgie, congratulations. Ryan, congratulations, and God bless you. Congratulations, congratulations. God bless you all. I'll have you girls come back up later, but for now, thank you. are dismissed to Children's Church at this time as the rest of us turn their Bibles to 1 Samuel 22. I forgot we were going to do the graduate blessing and so I have the regular, no. Um, the, the sermon is, uh, we're going to um, continue in our series in 1 Samuel, um, but today is, even though it's a, a long reading, we are, we're going to be um, a, a somewhat brief in, in order to accommodate um, some of the extras this morning. But I'm just going to start reading at verse, verse 1. I've titled this The Lowly versus the Mighty, but I thought of some other titles. Uh, man of Faith versus a Man of Fear. I think I like that one even better. Um, or a mad, mad Man to King and King to Mad Man. Uh, those are some of the different titles I thought of for this message because we see all of those things in, in this text this morning. So, verse 1 of chapter 22, David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him. And he became commander over all of them. And there were with him about 400 men. And David went from there to Mizpah of Moab. 
And he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother stay with you till I know what God will do for me. And he left, what God, and he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Then the prophet Gad said to David, Do not remain in the stronghold. Depart and go into the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Hereth. Now Saul heard that David was discovered and, and the men who were with him. Saul was sitting at Gibeah under the tamarisk tree on the height with his spear in his hand. And all his servants were standing about him. And Saul said to his servants who stood about him, Hear now, people of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that all of you have conspired against me? No one discloses to me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is sorry for me or, or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, who stood by his, the servants of Saul, I saw David, Je son of Jesse, uh, coming to Nob, to Ahim Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him provisions and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to summon Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all the father's, his father's house, the priests who were at Nob. And all of them came to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, son of Ahitub. And, answer, and he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword? and have inquired of God for him, so that he has risen against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king, And who among all your servants is so faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law and captain over your bodyguard and honored in your house? Is today the first time that I have inquired of God for him? No. Let not the king impute anything to his servant or to all the house of my father, for your servant has known nothing of all of this, much or little. And the king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. And the king said to the guard who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. And they knew that he fled and did not disclose it to me. But the servants of the king would not put out their hand to strike the priests of the Lord. Yes. Then the king said to Doeg, You turn and strike the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned and struck down the priests. And he killed on that day 85 persons who wore the linen ephod. And Nob, the city of priests, he put to the sword both man and woman, child and infant, ox, donkey, and sheep, he put to the sword. But one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. And David said to Abiathar, I knew on the day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of your father's house. So stay with me. Do not be afraid. For he who seeks my life seeks your life. With me you shall find safekeeping. Wow, the story continues with um, Saul just going crazy, right? Last week we looked at the battle of faith and fear within the life of David. And we saw how, how as he was running away from King Saul, um, and, and we see this throughout the remainder of the book of 1 Samuel, as he is fleeing Saul, he impersonated, um, uh, um, he, he impersonated a, a madman there in Gath before King Achish. He went into hiding in the cave of Adullam, halfway between Gath and Bethlehem. It said in, in this place, in this time, that David pens a couple of psalms. We, 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 we saw last week that he wrote some psalms while um, impersonating a crazy man, if you remember that. Today, in this text, he, he writes a couple of psalms as well. Psalm 57, 1. I'm just, I'm just going to read portions of a couple of these. Psalm 57 and Psalm 142. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for your, you my soul takes refuge. In you my soul takes refuge. 
In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. And then Psalm 42, verse 1, With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for more mercy to the Lord. He's writing these psalms, and I, and I encourage you to read, read the rest of those psalms, because they're, David's crying out to God as he is there in this cave, God, help me. And we see that God, um, the, the first point of the, of the message is this, God does not abandon his chosen. And David knows this. It's, it's why he was able to make it through these difficult times. From these psalms written from the cave, we get a picture of David initially fleeing like he has been, like, feeling like he's been abandoned. But David, by faith, looks beyond his emotions and his fears and his loneliness, beyond the present hopeless circumstances. He looks beyond that and he brings them under the domain or maybe in, within the context of God's promises. Okay? Yeah, he's, he's in a fearful situation. But he puts all of that in the context of God's faithfulness, of God's promises. He's trusting in the promises of God, trusting in the faithful provision of God. He is afraid, but that fear is mitigated by his faith in the person and promises of God. And as we read on, we see that he wasn't there alone. The writer tells us that his family joined him there. You know, and the reason is that we've learned that terrorists know how to find a person. They go get their family, Right? So David knew that his family was in danger, and so he brings them along, brings them to Moab. It wasn't just his family that joined him. There were all sorts of people gathered around David. One preacher has titled this section, David in Dire Straits with a Motley Crew. And some of you who re lived through the 80s in those rock groups, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Mark Knopfler. Um, David in Dire Straits with a Motley Crew. We, it's obvious what his dire straits were. He, he was fleeing from Saul. This motley crew is made up of people in distress, people struggling with their debts, people who were bitter in soul. And it's interesting that these outcasts of Israel will be the people that God uses to provide safety and protection for David. Right? I think that is so cool. He uses the outcasts, the downtrodden people, to rescue David. And there lies the second noteworthy point of today's episode in the story is that God uses the weak and the outcast to accomplish his purposes. These 400 people had gathered around David. They were exhausted and oppressed by the regime of Saul. Samuel had warned the elders back in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Remember what he said the, uh, when, when they called for a king, they cried out to a king? He says, who... Um, these people are going to take your wealth. They're going to conscript your sons and daughters into, into their armies. And what does Saul say to the people? In his response, he, he comes out with people. He says, well, um, who will give you vineyards and fields? David's not going to do it. Who's going to give you? Where's he going to get the vineyards and fields? He's, he's going to take it from the poor. And he says, I will make you commanders of thousands. Where is he going to get those thousands? He's going to conscript their sons and daughters in, into the army. So all of those things that Samuel had predicted their king would do, Saul was promising to the people, if you are faithful to me, if you follow me, I will do these things for you. Well, we know what he's going to do. He's going to oppress the people. And we'll see in the next chapter... That this motley crew under the leadership of David becomes a formidable fighting force. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 1.26 wrote, Consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no one may boast in the, uh, um, in, in the presence of God. 
God uses the weak and the outcast to accomplish his purposes so that there would be much boasting about him, about the Lord. Well, it's pretty clear that the cave was getting crowded, 400 plus people in there. David packs up once again, moves to Moab with his, his family, and there's good reason that David goes to Moab. It's a very interesting connection that at first I thought, ah, David, what, what a great guy. He's taking care of his mom and dad, taking them uh, off to this um, place to, to find a place for, of safekeeping. But then when I realized where it was, when I realized the family that David was from, he was taking his family back to their home because his great-grandma was Ruth, the Moabitess. He was taking his, his parents back home to provide them safe protection. And when you think about that, why in the world is Ruth ever in the story? Didn't need to be, but she was, because she needed to be. God in his divine, his sovereign plan appointed that Ruth the Moabitess would be in this line of David, would be in the lineage of Jesus, appointed um, her to marry an, a, a Jewish man so that when this time came, David would have a safe place to take his family. I thought that was cool. God's sovereign actions accomplish his sovereign purposes. Those actions long ago with great-grandma Ruth um, were set in place in order that God's plan to take care of David's parents would be fulfilled. You know, when... Um, because of these family connections, they could be protected from the attacks of Saul. It's not ironic. It's not coincidental. There's nothing coincidental about this. This is all the plan of God. Make no mistake, everything that happens in your life, my life, good and difficult, is part of God's grand plan. It's not so much about your life as it is about God's sovereign plan and his glory. So when things happen you don't understand, you know, this, this doesn't fit my plan, this doesn't fit where I'm headed, trust the Lord. His ways are right and true. His ways are best. Philippians 2.13, it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. I mean, when I, when I read 1 Samuel 1, I'm first, uh, 1 Samuel, this chapter, I, I was impressed by David for taking care of his parents the way he did, but, but the connection, just all of a sudden the light went on in my head. Oh, this all makes sense now. Story of Ruth, cool story, but there's so much more to it than I ever see, had seen before. From Moab, under the advisement of the prophet Gad, David traveled to the forest of Hereth. Again, we see at work God directing those who trust him. God sent this prophet along to tell David, get out of here, get out of this stronghold, move on to the wilderness, this forest. David's son Solomon wrote, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. We see David's faith exhibited in his realization that God would not abandon him. God would use the weak to support him. God had orchestrated events to help him, and God would guide him every step of his life. On the other hand, the second half of this chapter, or the second part of it, we see King Saul spiral, spiraling out of control because he had this fear of losing his power. He thought everyone was against him. He was paranoid, and he was going down a really, really dark path. His fear exploded into violent assassinations. Anyone suspected of aiding and abetting David, he would have murdered. In 1930, Joseph Stalin consolidated the communist power base in Russia under, uh, under his control by enact enacting the Great Purge in which more than a million Russian dissidents were either imprisoned in, in work camps or they were killed because he was afraid. He was afraid of somebody else standing against him. It's cowardly. It's a cowardly thing that scared leaders do to maintain power. 
Doeg the Edomite, who saw David with Ahimelech, the priest spilled the beans on where David had been. Saul sent, the priest, sent for the priest Ahimelech. He interrogated him, but he wouldn't listen to Ahimelech. Ahimelech said, I didn't know. He told me he was, he told me he was on a special mission, a secret mission for you, Saul. Saul wouldn't buy it. Remember how I said David lied last week? David saw how his lie had awful consequences. Saul turned to his guards and said, kill the priests, and I love it. He said, no. Here's, here's the commander-in-chief telling his army to assassinate these, these priests, and they said, no, we won't do it. They, they, he, these guys, there was no winning where, where they were standing. They couldn't win. But they chose the right thing. But Doeg the Edomite, um, he did the duty. Saul's fearful actions are a stark contrast to David's righteous acts motivated by his faith in God. So we see this man, this, this king, becoming a madman, basically. And the one who impersonated the madman last week is now a man exhibiting great faith in the Lord. Last week I warned that we must be aware that our fears and stresses do not lead us into temptation, into doing crazy things. Fearful Saul became vulnerable to that evil fleshly side of life. He became paranoid. One of Ahimelech's son, Abiathar, survives the slaughter at Nob and return, runs to David, tells David what had happened, and David does something very interesting here. He says, this is on me. He recognized that his presence there in Nob um, at Ahimelech's, at the, at the tabernacle there, there with Ahimelech, he recognized that telling that lie to Ahimelech that he was on a secret mission, that all contributed to this great um, destruction. He, he didn't do it. He wasn't guilty of it. But, but he, he said, if, if I hadn't been there, if I hadn't done what I did, this probably wouldn't have happened. Therefore, David committed to providing protection for Abiathar, this one survivor. So in the actions of David during this time, we see God's sovereign plan unfolding. God would use David to restore Israel to a right relationship with God. God would use David to save his family. He would use David to, to, uh, as a model of the Savior to come. Jesus would come as a descendant of David to save mankind. To all who would receive him as Lord. And so we jump right to this conclusion to say, have you said yes to Jesus? Have you confessed and repented of your sin and received his forgiveness? Have you asked him to forgive you and make him your Lord and Savior? Will you trust him? Only trust him. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, um, this next part of our service today, that of the Lord's Supper, is for you to celebrate what Jesus came to do, to save us. And so as the deacons and deaconesses come, prepare our hearts and minds. Let us take of the bread and the cup in a, in a worthy manner not harboring any sin in our hearts. Let's take a moment of confession and let us remember the, the great act of love that he did for us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to pay the penalty for our sin. As we remember that great sacrifice, help us, Lord, to understand and to grasp the depth of your love. Amen.
On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered his disciples together to celebrate the Passover feast, the remembrance of God's deliverance from the hands of the Egyptians, their ancestors. And in that time, he, he instructed them in a new remembrance that we celebrate today as he told them to do it often. He took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, you took that cup telling your disciples to let it remind them that wine that reminded them of the blood that you would shed for their sins, for ours. Help us in remembering. Amen. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. He went on to say, as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. Let us proclaim his faithfulness, his goodness to us in singing song. Will you stand with us 
as we sing this morning, how great is your faithfulness. And as we sing, our deacons and deaconesses will come and receive an offering for uh, benevolence in our community. If you are led to give, please give.